Hello and welcome to Foreman. So we are back again with another exclusive interview and today we have with us Aastha Jain who is popularly known as Equalist Aastha. This is the name of her YouTube channel. Many of you might have already watched her videos and you know her already. She has been promoting equality amongst both the genders from a very long period of time. And for those who do not know her or do not know about her channel, you can check the description below. The link is right there. You can click on the link and visit her channel and watch her videos as well. And also, do not forget to subscribe to her channel and give her your support. So let's see what she has to say. Hi, Asta, and welcome to Foreman. And thank you so much for joining us. So, uh, Asta, if we talk about equality, then equality should be equal for everyone. But if I talk about our country in particular, then it is not the same here. The situation is completely different because we have so many laws uh, which are meant to protect women, but there is no any such law which are meant, uh, meant to protect the men. And um, also we can see that most of the laws, they are gender biased, they are uh, not neutral. So you being a woman, you also speak about equality and you do not particularly support any one gender. You speak about the harassments faced by men as well and regarding the gender neutral laws. So uh, what kind of reactions you get from your female fol uh, followers when you speak about the opposite gender and their rights? Uh, see, to be honest, I feel like if somebody is following me, uh, whether it's a man or a woman, uh, they are following me because they do agree with my ideas. So it's not usually like the people who are following me who have like, a, oh my God, what the hell did she say perspective. But it's usually people who are, are not following me and maybe they've not seen a couple of my other posts or, you know, people who, uh, this includes men and women, not just females, right? Who, you know, just want to see a title or maybe the first one minute of, not even one minute, 20 seconds of a video and make their judgment. Those are the people sometimes who will, uh, you know, have a lot of... Uh, a lot of negative things to say so uh, but I feel like that does exist no matter whatever you say on the internet like I used to make food videos and if I if I if I would say I like blue lace people would get angry why do you not like green lace so I think that's that just comes with the internet regardless of whatever you speak about okay okay that is true because uh, if we give uh, too much attention to what others are saying, then we won't be able to achieve our goals. So we are here to promote equality. Yeah. We are not here to support any one gender. It might be men, it might be women, but we are not supporting any one gender. We are here to promote human rights and equality. So um, uh, in uh, like recently, a very a topic is very uh, the topic was trending and it is still trending. That is marital rape, and there are many people who are after it. They're saying that marital rape needs to be criminalized, but there are some other parties who are against it. Somebody is speaking for the motion, somebody is speaking against the motion. So what are your viewpoints on this? That do you think that there, uh, there is something called marital rape that needs to be criminalized? What do you think about this particular topic? Uh, in fact, I have a whole video recorded on this, which I've just not had the time to edit. But like, I think there's a lot, lot to say here, which can't easily just be put together in a simple answer, but I'll try to summarize it as much as I can. So basically, if we just look at it, if we you know, forget the fact of the other laws we have in India or, or anything of that sort, if we just look at it from one perspective, should natural rate be criminalized? Obviously, like there is no, I feel there's no two ways about it. But when we, you know, everything is not just black and white, there's nuance in every uh, stage. So when you add the other elements into it, if we are talking about natural rape being criminalized, why are we only considering that women are the victims in this? Men can also be victims of natural rape. And in India, we don't have laws for not just natural rape against men, but just rape against men in, in general. Forget rape, even something as simple as stalking or, you know, harassing from that perspective, which, you know, as women, we don't like it. So if men face that, you know, some sort of unwanted attention, they keep on or getting from certain females or uh, you know, females talking them and all. There's no law to that as well. And so, when you move forward in each step, let's uh, you know look at criminalizing all of that as well. And when specifically talking about marital rape, it should be criminalized. But hopefully, I mean, I don't think anybody is really talking about this. And hopefully, for uh, whoever is the perpetrator, it doesn't have to be a man or a woman who's a perpetrator. I mean, it doesn't have to be sorry, the only the man who's a perpetrator. 
a woman can also be a perpetrator in my opinion, especially when it also comes to things like, uh, you know, if a couple is thinking about having a kid and one person wants to and another person doesn't want to. And uh, if uh, the female is not on birth control, but lies about that, that also accounts for rape because you're not giving a full picture. So we don't have laws for that, that no matter what happens, like, you know, if there's a pregnancy, even if you were duped into it, you will have to follow through for the whole thing. But uh, yeah, I think that's my overall perspective. I think a little scattered what I said, there are a lot of pointers to come here, not just one. Yeah, so in the end, the thing is that rape uh, can be done by anyone. It's not only that uh, the exactly. man is helping a woman. And consent is only not about the women. Mm-hmm. That's what I feel. Mm-hmm. Because consent can be about the men also. He can be also forced by the women or the spouse. So that is one thing. And if if the uh, code criminalizes men or women, then it's going to be very destructive. Because the main thing here is that there won't be any kind of evidence. Because inside the four walls, what is whatever is happening, we are not there to see that. So if the woman says that he raped me, then it will be considered a rape and he will be punished for that. So it is, I feel it is very unfair. I feel obviously there is, uh, it's it's not, there are, matter rape is criminalized in other countries as well. I think yes. what we can do in that, so it's not like I'm you know, an expert in law. But uh, in that situation, we can always look at how it's going on in other places and how people are, uh, you know, putting the matters forward or through when it comes to such a situation. Because I mean, if it's just going to be as good as hey, hey, I say he raped me and so he did. I mean, that's not the answer. I, I don't think laws are formed just on that basis, right? So if there's more depth to it, then I think it makes uh, sense. To come back. Yes, yes. Agreed. Very true. And uh, if we speak about feminism, so when feminism actually started or it came into being, so the main purpose of feminism was to empower the women because there was a point of time when women they did not have power and position, they did not have opportunities, they did not have that rights. But uh, if we talk about today, now, the current scenario, uh, do you really think that feminism is still serving its purpose or it has deviated from its rules? Uh, see, the thing is, I can generalize it. And if I really just generalize it, I really obviously say that I feel like it has deviated from its roots. But, uh, and you know, there was a point of time where I used to completely believe that. But over time, when I've spoken to more and more people, I've realized you really need to look at it from a very individual perspective because feminism is not something that has rules that, you know, okay, so this, this rule is there, this is there, you follow this and, you know, you get to know somebody who's a feminist or not a feminist and then you see what they do. It's not that. It's just anybody can get up today and say, I'm a feminist and then you cannot uh, put all the blame on that one person that, oh, this person does this, so the whole movement is wrong for yeah. beauty. I think we need to see it from an individual perspective. Or at least, uh, if I see, see certain feminist leaders, I think some of them are nice. I think some of them, on the other hand, are, uh, you know, they make a lot of anti-men statements. They make a lot of statements which which aren't in line with uh, equality, per se. So that's when also it's wrong. So, you know, seeing are those leaders being celebrated or they're not being celebrated. And uh, that's, that's just what we have to look at. So, okay. And uh, when we're talking about feminism, then one more question I would like to ask is that uh, when we talk about divorce, then comes the question of maintenance or alimony. So in many cases, and it's uh, happening very frequently, this particular thing, that uh, we see that the woman, she is uh, capable enough to earn and she is well educated. And in some cases, it has also been seen or observed that the woman is already working somewhere, but she is hiding her income. And then they are claiming a huge amount of alimony or maintenance from the husband on a monthly basis. So what I feel is that this is this we cannot this cannot be termed as equality. So what as a woman, what do you think about this particular thing, maintenance that a woman feels that every woman feels that if we are separated from our husband, then we need that maintenance from our husband because it is their responsibility. But if we talk about women empowerment, then I uh, uh, that's my perspective that I do not think that a woman should be dependent on someone else, that too, on her ex-husband. So what is your point of view? Uh, see, again, I think this has a lot of layers. So suppose somebody's been married for a month versus somebody's been married for 10 years. Yes. That makes a huge difference, right? And also, 
whether the woman was working or not working during the marriage like if suppose somebody is a doctor female is a doctor and she uh, you know the husband and her are mutually decided that she'll be the one taking care of the house and the kids and he'll be the one owning the bed then after 10 years if things go wrong and they have a divorce then to say that no since you already have a degree you're capable of capable of earning so you have to again go out there and do it i think there that mutual understanding sort of goes away because they had decided something together and then it didn't work out and you know getting into the job market after all these years is also not very easy uh, but uh, for example it's just been a month or a very short period of time that somebody's not worked or it has not been a mutual decision where before the marriage they thought that they're going to have two incomes uh, and then later on the female just decided you know what i don't care i'm just going to do whatever the hell i want and you have to fund whatever i want so then that is a totally different thing to look at and that's where i feel it is completely wrong and secondly when you speak about the hiding income part like that itself is illegal <laughs> you know you got to pay your taxes right yes, so yes. i think there is not even a question of whether it's right or wrong it's obviously like uh wrong altogether okay and uh, you know uh, as i already told in the beginning as i already said in the beginning that uh, there are so many laws in our country that is only meant for selecting women they are biased towards this one gender the uh, female gender and uh, today we can see that there are so many women who are actually misusing those laws and they are uh, you know falsely implicating the men and the shocking part is that uh, in many cases even the judge he or she knows that it's a false a false case and there is no evidence uh, present with the with that women or the lady but still the case is going on and on and in most of the cases we can see that they are just mis utilizing the laws because they know because the main why they are misusing the laws is that they know that there is nobody going to punish us if we are proven false if i am putting a case on a man and later uh, uh, the case is proven to be false and he is acquitted the law the um, government the constitution is not going to punish me i know that and that is the reason i can you know uh, you know be parva ho ke i can just uh, implicate any man in any case uh, so uh, uh, what do you have to say, uh, like say about this we should be stopped i feel like uh, i'm i'm not sure again i think there are laws for it but as much as what i've heard is that it's very tough to like after first the years of court battle to go ahead and do another court battle to be like this person you know misused the law so now i want to you know uh, get to get to my revenge or whatever you want to call it that itself is a huge process which is why a lot of people don't take it up the thing is that uh, removing the laws is obviously not what makes sense but i think what makes sense is trying to make them more full proof and if somebody is caught doing something wrong which is like filing a false case or uh, you know in a malicious way then there definitely should be some form of punishment for it like uh i know so this is something from the uk that i know that uh um uh, in case you are found now not always as much as i know is what i'm saying but in case you are found like wasting court time then you have to pay like a heavy fine for it or you have to do community service for it you don't just go to jail for it but there are some repercussions that you have for wasting court time because you did lie so you know we need to do that as well because obviously we are on such a huge backlog of cases the police and the lawyers and judges they are like uh, they have so many cases to deal with so many things to deal with and then if somebody found wasting time just for the person benefit then there should be repercussion now whether it be laws related to gender or any other laws we have very few repercussion for somebody if somebody is fired like a police okay and um, uh, do you think there are enough uh, people are aware of different kind of laws you know it might be the women or the men but do you really think that they know in this different kind of laws present for them i think many of the men they actually do not know what is for 19a or what is a dv uh, or what is a dowry they have heard these things maybe but they are not aware ki isme kya kya cheeze hai or whatever it is so do you think that awareness is not there and we need to aware the people more about this kind of laws and how they can protect themselves or what kind of precautions can be taken uh, i think earlier so there was very 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 little awareness but slowly i've been seeing uh, from personal experience i've been seeing a little more people do know about it now and uh, some people are little more aware but again very much in you know 
uh, an urban city and your upper middle class crowd and all of that. Not that a lot of people in general know about it, but you can pick that up about any law, not just gender related. There's so many laws that we don't know about. So, uh, you know, I I feel you cannot force educate somebody and it's not something that will obviously be taught in school. It's, uh, so it's just about uh, people seeking out information about this or, you know, right now there are some lawyers and creators and all of that who do speak about this on platforms like YouTube or Reels where people usually go for entertainment and that's when they see it in the middle of their feed is when uh, they sort of have a realization. I don't think people are actively out there seeking this uh, information. <laughs> At all. Nobody knows, nobody cares. It's only either when it happens to them or somebody they know, yes. or like they come across it in some other ways when they are going to know. Yeah, this one I agree with this point. That when something yeah. happens to a particular person at that point of time, you will start searching for different uh, forums where you can find different kind of information. Before before that, nobody really cares. That is one of the drawbacks, I think, because I do not know why people are not much educated or aware of, of different laws present to them. Maybe because of the lack of awareness and there are not much forums who are covering such kind of news because we can see almost every news channels are covering, you know, uh, the harassment related to women. But maybe less number of news channels or media houses are there who are actually covering, you know, abuse faced by men or, you know, other women misusing the laws. I can rarely see this kind of news. Nowadays, there are many portals coming up on social media platforms, you can say. Uh, so we all are trying to cover up those news. But other than that, if you talk about the big media channels or media houses, they are never seen covering this kind of issues. So I think that is one of the major reasons that people are not aware of this kind of laws. Yeah. And uh, uh, once there was a section called 497 um, uh, IPC, which said that you no, know, if a man commits adultery with the wife of another man, then uh, he would be punished for that. But the woman would not be punished if she commits any kind of adultery. Then uh, the law was scrapped. But um, uh, still, we can see that uh, still we have seen that there are many uh, courts giving judgment that you know extramarital affair is uh, still a cruelty, uh, which these laws uh, uh, said otherwise. So what what are your comments on adultery? Because some of the courts they are saying extramarital affair is all fine. Some of them are giving judgments that no, it cannot be done because it, uh, it causes mental cruelty to the other person, uh, to the counterpart. So what are your opinion about adultery? This is still a very controversial to uh, topic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if I speak from the perspective of uh, like courts and the cases that you're talking about, to be honest, I'm not aware of a lot of these cases. Uh, but uh, if you speak about adultery in general, I feel obviously it's absolutely incorrect unless some reason an open relationship. Now that's, you know, there you come of how to deal with that. Uh, but uh, uh, I personally feel that adultery is a form of cruelty in, and can be grounds for divorce, definitely. Uh, on the other hand, earlier, I think with that IPC that you mentioned, I think people could go, like, go to jail for it, which is absolutely like wrong. I don't think it deserves jail time or not case. You know, in school, who needs to like go in jail for, to you know be punished for something like this? But uh, if you're talking about divorce or grounds for cruelty uh, in marriage, yes, definitely. I think adultery does fall under things like that. Yes, and uh, Asta, do you think that we need we as a woman we need to aware women first regarding the misuse of laws? Do you think we need to spread the awareness among the women, among the females first that um, uh, why they should not misuse the laws and um, uh, what are the repercussions faced or what are the harassments faced by the men and his family? Do you think that we should spread awareness among the females first? Uh, I think this is not, if somebody is, you know, um, if somebody is a malicious person, they're going to do something wrong no matter what. So, you know, when you hear things like, I, I just uh, take a little different tangent on this. When you hear things like, uh, teach men not to rape. It's like, that's not something that has to be taught. You know, most men who are sane and have basic understanding know that it's wrong to do it. And if there is a rapist, even if you teach him not to rape, he's still going to go out there and do it. That way, you know, if you speak about it. So the same way, if there is a woman who wants to, uh, you know, take revenge and do some malicious activity and, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is, so she's going to do it regardless of whether or not you tell her not to do it. And somebody who's not aware of this, if they don't have 
bad intentions, they aren't going to do it regardless. So I don't think it's about teaching somebody not to be a bad person. I think that's something you just learn in general. But uh, otherwise, men are the ones I think who need to be more aware of the laws which are uh, against them, which are not, you know, so, so they are always aware. So like, uh, there are people who, uh, I think, Dipika Nara and Dhanraj had once said, oh, Google put out this FB post about uh, the kind of uh, documents you should have with you, uh, the man's family should have with them when you get married if any exchange of gifts is happening and things like that. You know, these are the things that obviously some the men in that perspective need to be aware or women need to be aware if, it, if they feel this is going to happen uh, with their family members. So, so otherwise, making women aware of the laws which are there, I mean, obviously everyone should be aware in general, but I don't think that by itself is going to help to be like, hey, these are the laws that you should not go out and misuse them. I don't think that's going to be that much help. Yes, yes. Because a few days back also, we, I think you must have also seen an advertisement by Mankind Pharma that they have uh, said one thing, few lines, that, you know, uh, it's uh, our duty to teach the boys from a very young age that, you know, rape karna nahi chalta hai, keep teasing nahi chalta hai, etc. Et so, I felt that that ad was uh, not at all uh, pleasant because um, no parents would teach their son to rape or to eat tease. And uh, uh, Nobody will want to do that unless and until he is into some kind of uh, such uh, company where he learned all this. And, uh, the situation can be anything, but nobody is teaching their kids to rape someone or eat to someone or to destroy someone's uh, life. So that ad, I felt, was something which uh, was very unpleasant and because uh, they were generalizing the entire community. So those kind of ads, I, I personally feel, should, be, should not be, you know, um, Telecasted because it because it uh, sends the wrong message. Oh, I've personally not seen the ad. I'm not so I'm not very sure what you're talking about. But uh, given what you said, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's what. Uh, so, Asta, uh, uh, what message you want to give to all our followers, uh, ma uh, male and female, both of them? What message do you have for all our followers regarding this whole particular issue, gender equality? Uh, I think uh, the big issue right now is that we're seeing that there is like a gender war, that everything has become like men versus women. Uh, and I think when you do that kind of a thing, you're literally going to get nowhere. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse for everybody. Uh, I think it shouldn't be men versus women. I think it should be like men and women versus uh, the people who cause the problem. Now, whoever it is on the other end, who is causing the problems in your personal life or in gender, if you're a, on, a, on a bigger scale, like you are a judge or a police commissioner, you know, that's where you have no power. But otherwise, I think that's what it should be. And anytime, if, uh, you know, because I also see this from, uh, we, we see this from certain feminists where some of them are very anti-men. But uh, I've also seen that in some men's rights activists where, they completely, because of the things that have happened to them or whatever, else, they become like super anti-human as well. And it's like, you know, you're really not going to get anywhere if you try to that. It just has to be uh, to see what can benefit you and uh, the rest of the people as well. Not just that it has to be one gender versus the other gender. So, yeah, I think that's, that's fair. Yeah, that's true because uh, men and women, they were actually met together. So, we can, uh, this wall cannot be there uh, or exist if we have only one gender. In, in this earth. So, exactly. this, to understand this particular thing, you don't know my exact and I, it, it's not a war between these two genders. There cannot be a war between these two genders. So, we, we are hopeful that very, very soon we will be having a, we will be living in a country which will be having gender neutral laws and there will be equality for everyone and uh, equal punishments for equal crimes for all the genders. So, uh, thank you so much, Asta, for joining us. It was lovely talking to you and we look forward. We, uh, to more such conversations with you on different topics related to this issue. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.